Petrito talking about movies. My guests talk a lot. Sorry, Frank. That's no problem. Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, tomorrow night on Windcam at 9 o'clock. Yes, and I envy your viewers who have not seen this movie yet. I hope you have a really good print because it's, uh, you know, it's in the public domain. The reason it's in the public domain is because it is so old. Any movie that old is, is automatically in the public domain. And there are some inferior prints running around, but I hope you give your audience a good one. And this is this the first horror film? Some people say so. I say not, but this is certainly the first horror film of great influence. And, uh, you know, some would say its influences are still being f felt today. It was uh, weird in such so many senses. It's, uh, you know, a prime example of what is called German expression expressionism, which is, you know, very stylized and somewhat abstract uh, on everything, the acting style, the sets. The sets in this thing are remarkable, mainly because they're done so cheaply. They're, they're all out of paper, but they couldn't afford lighting, so they painted shadows on. I don't think there's a right angle in the whole movie. Every, everything is, uh, is, seems obtuse. It's uh, very much uh, I, uh, nightmarish, and I don't mean that in the usual sense, in that it's scary, and well, whether you're scared or not is up to you, but everything is a bit unreal in it. It's, uh, it's overdone, and, uh, and if you have a print where the, the tinting of the scenes is maintained, because they tinted a lot of scenes in the silent movies, you know, to match the mood, if there was a, a, a scene of great fury, they might be tinted with sort of reddish, or bluish, greenish. And this movie, uh, and I, the print that I've seen that claims to have the original tint colors has a lot of them in yellow and gold. So it's, uh, it's a weird film all around. And, uh, you know, this is during the era of a German expressionism, that, that no man's land between World War I and the rise of Nazis in, uh, in late in the decade. And the, the Germans just churned out one classic film after another. And the four that anybody that likes uh, pop culture has to see. If you, if, you need, if, you, if you have a need to be an expert on pop culture, there's four German expressionist movies you have to see. This one, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. A year later came The Golem. A year after that came Nosferatu. And then a few years after that came Metropolis. If you can see those four, do you know German Expressionism? Not even close. But you're, you're getting a, uh, a handle on how they influence pop culture because you'll see a lot of images over and over in that. And now, uh, who is Caligari? Caligari is a carnival side, uh, runs a carnival sideshow. And his main attraction is a somnambulist. I hope I'm saying that right. And this is a person who allegedly never s sleeps all the time. And he comes out of his uh, sleep every now and then and predicts the future. And you go there and you, you place your pennies down and uh, Caligari taps on him and he opens his eyes and tells you your future, which is, in this movie, is usually pretty bleak. And, uh, and actually there's going on more than that. So Caligari is the mastermind behind this all. And the somnambulist is, uh, che is Cesare, who uh, we will soon find, so I'm not revealing anything. I don't, I don't want to reveal a plot, but uh, you'll soon find he is uh, doing crimes at night while in his sleep. So it's, it, it's, it's even weird in that sense. Uh, ten years later, Universal Studios started making horror films, and Dracula used a lot from Nosferatu, Frankenstein used a lot from The Golem, and Murders in the Rue Morgue, used a lot from Cabin and Dr. Caligari. In fact, it's almost a remake. In, the, in some scenes, especially at the carnival and, uh, and with uh, Bela Lugosi played Dr. Morocco, he doesn't look a thing like Caligari, but he dresses like him, and his whole sideshow uh, uh, get-up is about the same. So, uh, and then this was, this, was why this, this was an art movie. It was intended as an art house movie. Uh, I think the critical reception was ranged from enthusiastic to don't bother. Uh, the popular reception, it wasn't really made for a popular audience, so I mean, if I was reading online how audiences booed it at first uh, showing, I'm not sure if that's true at all, but you can see this was not made, this was not made to make money, this was made as, a, you know, as, as an expression of uh, individual art. Um, the only person in this movie that most uh, American viewers are likely to have seen again is Conrad Veidt, uh, who is played Major Strasse in Casablanca. He was the he was the head Nazi in Casablanca, 
and he was the evil wizard in uh, Thief of Baghdad, the 1940 version with Sabu. And he had an interesting career. In fact, all of these people had interesting careers because the Nazis were coming to Germany. And the, the guy that played uh, Caligari, Werner Krauss, was a blatant anti-Semite, loyal to the Nazis throughout. Uh, Conrad Veidt, who played uh, Cesare, uh, had a Jewish wife, and he had no taste for the Nazis, and he, he left to go to England and then to Hollywood. Uh, Rudolf Klein Rug, who uh, has a brief but very memorable role as a, as a suspected murderer. And we have 28 seconds left. 28 seconds. Anyway, so enjoy the movie. Uh, it, 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 this, is one, this is very influential. Even today it's entertaining, but it is weird. Thank you, Frank Delestrito. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Cabinet of Dr. Caligari tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. Nine seconds left. Thank you to Judy. Thank you, Windcam. Views and opinions of mine and my guests. Have a great, great weekend.